And this video starts on page 13 after you've done the neck taper. So here we're sanding the headstock transition from the taper to the headstock. You can see on this one I've cut away those waste pieces. I actually suggest you don't do that because the whatever saw you use will tend to, if you're not real careful, will tend to gouge the, uh, the neck uh, behind it. So we're almost there. Keep sanding until that's a smooth blend. There we go. And now do the other side. And try to make them even. Now we're uh, putting some layout lines on the neck for rasping. You can see the one line all the way around at 3 and 3 eighths. That's the body joint line. In other words, when it's installed, the body will be at that 3 and 3 eighths line. These other lines are to define the first set of chamfers and you can see we transition at each end. In this case, we uh, don't want to go more than 5 eighths closer to that tuner hole. Okay, with those lines in place, wrap it with paper around the blunt end. This will protect the sides from the vise jaws. And install in the vise, and I actually suggest you put that 3 and 3 eighths line slightly set into the vise jaws to protect it further. It we're going to use three tools at this point, a coarse rasp, and a medium rasp, and a file. Okay, so we're uh, holding the rasp uh, with heavy pressure, a hand on each end, and you'll find you, you get the smoothest and uh, best quality neck if you make most of your strokes down the neck along the neck. That is, don't work in one location, that tends to gouge it. Okay, now I'm at twice speed and just showing you how we're cutting these chamfers away. When you work at the transitions at either end, it helps to use the rounded part of the rasp like this. And that tends to make a gouge. Uh, you can see a little gouge there, and so you'll need to blend that um, right there. I'm blending it. Okay. So here we're cutting there. Again, don't get too close to that 3 and 3 eighths line. Now we're doing the other side, twice speed. Uh, and when you're done with the rasping, you'll have two 45 to roughly 45 degree chamfers. Uh, and if you've done those right, this will establish a good geometry so your neck is symmetric on the left and right sides. Okay, now we cut off the corners that we just made. So in other words, from a um, instead of having just one chamfer per side, we're going to have a total of three chamfers per side. There's the one between the, the top and the chamfer, and here's the one between the chamfer and the side of the neck. Try to leave about a quarter inch of uh, untouched wood on the fretboard side. And I, I sometimes I put a line there to help me so I don't uh, rasp too far. Use the rounded side of the rasp when you're working in those corners. Here we are at twice speed. Okay, uh, and this is the result of those three chamfers per side with the coarse rasp. Okay, now we switch to a fine rasp. Uh, this has random cut teeth, and it's it's good to round over those uh, chamfers and produce a perfectly round surface. It's also good, in particular, because it doesn't leave deep scratches like the coarse rasp does. Uh, use the rounded part of the rasp near the transitions. It's, it can take a pretty aggressive wood. It's certainly better than a file. Um, and it's a lot better than a coarse brass for smoothness. This is very time consuming. Of course, I've cut out a lot of video. This whole process will probably take you um, roughly a half hour to an hour. Uh, you can also use that kind of a technique to round over, make sure you have indeed a round service. The transitions are the hardest part. You'll spend as much time on those as you do. Okay, so there, um, you want to do that pretty frequently. Take your hand and sweep it over the back of the neck and feel for irregularities. You want that to be a very natural motion because you'll be uh, when you play it, you'll want that to be smooth. Um, now we switch to a file, a coarse file, and this is to remove rasp lines. 
uh, it won't take a lot of wood except in the transitions but it's important that we get rid of all the rasp lines before we move to sandpaper and when you work near the transitions there at the um, headstock work away from the neck or work towards the middle and here at the headstock work towards the middle that's because the wood will tend to fray if you try to uh, cut it towards the headstock or towards the vise. It's just due to the nature of how the wood's cut there. And if it frays, then you have a lot more work to do. But again, the rounded part of that course file is very helpful to get into that uh, radius. Your hand will spend a lot of time up here. Um, not quite up this high, but uh, near the nut, and so that's the most important part to be smooth for most playing. And here's the result for a round file, for the, for the course file. That's what you're looking for. There will be some scratches left. We're going to um, discover those when we sand, but hopefully we got most of them.